All right, y'all, this is part three. If you want to watch the first two parts, this is all on the playlist. So you just click on the playlist. You can scroll up to part one. But if you're on part three, welcome. So in those days, I found myself quite preoccupied and fascinated with human constructed faiths and religions. I've always been this way. Even as a child, my written stories were more, more, more relegated to religious leaning questions of what does it all mean? Why are we here? Kind of like the philosophical existential type of questions. And my story characters often became these 2D renderings of people that I knew in real life who I would compel to ask these questions out loud and directly to one another. The answers were always kind of trite because I was very young. I hadn't lived enough to add complexity to them, yet the simplistic understandings, which could be labeled as naive, are what I have now circled back to today. It's interesting how that happens. So at 16, I might have said, we're alive to take care of and love one another. Like love was the answer. At 18, I might have said, to create something that you leave behind, to be a person of influence, like an artist, an author, an actor, to leave behind art, basically. At 20, I might have said, to learn and to fill up your cup with knowledge. At 22, I might have said, to become the best artist that you can be, like personal optimization. But now, all these years later, I believe what 16-year-old me believed, that we're all just here to love each other, to just take care of one another. Totally a collectivist. Like Rumi says, we're all just walking each other home. I'm probably too hard on my younger self, even in my subconscious mind. He was so earnest and idealistic in a way that I am no longer fully. But what connects us, me, to him is a flame that I've kept protected of his innocence, my innocence, and an undeniable hopefulness that does flow through my present work. It's not always immediately apparent, but somewhere there is in every story, as Jack Gilbert might have called it, a stubborn gladness that refuses to extinguish itself. I'm definitely like a hopeful optimistic person at my core and no matter how cynical the world makes me I can't I can't bend that no matter what happens to me I refuse to let myself become cynical and even when cynicism infects its way into my consciousness as it is so easy to do when you grow older namely in the moments before I've had my morning cup of black coffee or my daily ZOA before the rush of caffeine quickly reminds me of what a marvelous world it actually is how things can and often do get better when we collaborate and work with one another and just like how much there is to be grateful for. If we just work with one another and work tirelessly to appreciate love and tend to all that makes us different from each other, to, to love and appreciate those differences.